Hi, my name is Tanya Pereira and I'm going to talk to you today about my master's thesis on the physical demands of snowmobiling. My research is in collaboration with the Human Performance and Health Research Lab and the Canadian Council of Snowmobile Organizations. So let's start with a little background information on snowmobiling. It's a wintertime activity and in Canada there are over 1.5 million families involved in snowmobiling each year and over 120,000 kilometers of dedicated trails. The average rider is about 42 years of age. The main uses are for recreation or transportation, whether that's your primary mode of transport or for occupational reasons, like working in law enforcement in a national park or as a ranger. Some of the reasons that snowmobilers state they participate in the activity is an opportunity to explore nature, spending time with friends and family members while obtaining the benefits of participation and physical activity. Some benefits of physical activity include a reduced risk of chronic disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cancer to enhance cognitive and physical function as we age. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines recommends 150 minutes of physical activity each week with at least 10 minutes of vigorous activity in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle and reduce our risk of chronic conditions. In the winter, North American energy expenditure, or the total amount of calories burned for your day-to-day -day activities is reduced weekly by 15 to 20%. So we are not meeting those goals. The reasons or barriers that stop us from meeting our goals and participating in physical activity are the temperature. It's just way too cold outside to go for a run. The snowfall, it's just too heavy that you get snowed in or it makes it more difficult for you to get around and go to the gym and reduce daylight hours. With the sun setting earlier, there's a smaller time frame for you to be able to go outside while there is still light out and participate in physical activity, considering that you have a full day of work or school. Failing to meet those physical activity guidelines is associated with 15% of the 1.6 million chronic health conditions diagnosed each year. So how does snowmobiling fit into all this? My question is, could snowmobile riding be a potential winter alternative for recreational activity? So could you go for a snowmobile ride instead of going for a run during the winter and still get the same health benefits? The answer is, I don't know. There isn't enough scientific evidence to justify or classify snowmobiling as an activity that is intense enough to induce health benefits. While scientific evidence is limited, you can draw parallels by comparing snowmobiling to other riding-based activities. So for example, if we look at horseback riding, it's similar to snowmobiling in that over the course of a ride or a trail, it involves various changes in speed, uneven ground, and even going over jumps. And all of that can affect the rider's metabolic demands or the amount of oxygen that the body needs in order to participate in activity. While horseback riding, oxygen consumption has been recorded to be between 40 to 80% of the maximal aerobic capacity. You can think of maximal aerobic capacity as the body's maximum amount of work that it can do, and horseback riding fits somewhere between 40 to 80% of that. Over the course of the run or the trail ride, while you were horseback riding, it was constantly changing as there were parts of the trail that are harder or easier than others. And we suspect that it might be the same case while you're snowmobiling. You can also compare snowmobiling to ATV riding and off-road motorcycle riding, which has shown to increase oxygen consumption by 3.5 and 6 times that of resting, which classifies those two activities as a moderate intensity activity by the American College of Sports Medicine. So what is the purpose of my research? Basically, it is to answer that question. Can I replace a run by going for a snowmobile ride? So I have to determine if snowmobile riding is an activity that requires enough physical effort to be able to induce health benefits. And can I compare it to any other forms of traditional activities? So is snowmobile riding like going for a walk or a jog or a run or horseback riding? 
My other purpose is to determine if there's a difference between riding different terrain types. So is riding in the mountains, is that easier or harder than riding on flat land? In order to answer that question, I'm going to use a national snowmobile survey, a VO2 metabolic test, a graded exercise test, impedance cardiography, a vertical jump test, and a hand grip strength test. Let's start with the survey. So the purpose of the survey is to define what the average rider experiences, their perceptions, and their region and rider type. So I'm going to be asking them questions like, how difficult do they think snowmobiling is compared to other activities? How many days a week do they ride? And what kind of activities are they doing when they're snowmobiling? Are they mostly riding uphill, downhill? Are they mostly digging themselves out? And how often that happens to be able to define what the demand is and what an average ride would be. So the survey is gonna consist of 38 questions with multiple choice, scales, and open-ended questions. And it will be distributed nationally to snowmobile clubs and organizations in Canada and throughout the states. All of the survey data will be used to build a representative course. So now that I've answered how to define snowmobiling, the next step would be actually measuring what that demand is. In order to measure that demand, I'm going to be using the COSMED K5. So here's what it looks like from the front and behind. If you look at the first photo, there is a picture of a rider wearing the mask underneath his helmet. The second photo shows the portable analyzer connected to sampling lines that are connected to the mask in order to collect um, oxygen and carbon dioxide and other respiration variables. The two next photos show one of our riders wearing the COSMED K5 during his trail run. So with this analyzer, we are able to quantify any speed changes, changes in altitude, oxygen consumption, carbon dioxide production, and fuel use. So whether he's burning carbs or burning fat as he goes through his ride, as well as heart rate. The interesting thing about the K5 is that there are only two in North America, and one of them is at the University of Guelph, while the other is at a Canadian hospital. The data obtained while snowmobile riding will be compared to a traditional VO2 max test. A VO2 max test is a graded exercise test that progressively gets harder until you can no longer run or cycle, and it measures the maximum amount of work that your body is capable of doing. For our test, it was a cycle test, and we will be comparing that cycle test to snowmobiling in order to identify the amount of work that snowmobiling requires. So you look at the total amount of work that your body can do and out of that how much work is snowmobiling. Impedance cardiography is a measure of the total electrical activity within the chest and how it changes over time. When your heart goes to beat, an electrical impulse is sent from your brain to your heart telling it to contract so it'll push out blood into your circulatory system, then it relaxes to fill with blood so it can repeat the process. The device that we're using functions by emitting a low frequency current from one electrode to the other. The electrodes are placed at the neck, all over the chest, on the side of the rib cage, as well as the back, and it measures the resistance to that current in order to determine things like heart rate, the amount of blood that fills the heart vessels as the heart is relaxing, as well as the amount of blood pushed out as the heart contracts, and that goes into your circulatory system. What makes this device really cool is that it gives us a snapshot in time of the hemodynamics of blood flow. So it basically breaks down blood flow and tracks its passage while you're exercising. We are going to be comparing muscular strength and power tests before and after a snowmobile ride to see if there is any changes in your strength and power that would indicate that you are tired. So if your strength test like the hand grip goes down, that means your hands are tired because you're constantly holding onto the handlebars and gripping pretty tight, so those muscles become tired. Or for your vertical jump test, which is your power test, if snowmobiling is able to fatigue you, then we will see a change in your power outcome as well. Our analysis thus far, so what I did was take the survey results 
and split them into either mountain versus flatland riding and kind of broke them down into pie charts to be able to show you the different terrain types and the different tasks associated with riding in the mountain or riding on flatland. So if you look at the two top pie charts, we looked at riding groomed trails versus non-groomed trails. So a groomed trail is a trail that has been flattened and a non-groomed trail is basically kind of going off road. So looking at mountain versus flatland riding, they are complete opposites with mountain spending more time on non-groomed trails and flatland riders spending, spending more time on groomed trails. And then we look to the two bottom pie charts, which show the tasks that are associated with riding in those areas. So a majority of the time, mountain riders spend riding sideways or going downhill, while flatland riders spend most of their time turning corners. And this will definitely affect the demands um, that we'll see when we are able to analyze the rest of the data. It's important to consider that physical activity is only one part of the piece of the puzzle when it comes to determining your health. Other things like your eating habits, your sleeping habits, your stress levels, and your genetics can all be huge players in determining your health. And for this research, I am only looking at the physical demand, so the physical activity of participating in snowmobiling. If you liked my video or wanted to check out more of our research, visit hplguelph.weebly.com to see what else we have going on in the lab, or you can contact me directly at tpereio one at uofguelph.com.